Narayan. Please sit in any comfortable meditative posture. Hands on your knees in Gnyan or Chin Mudra. Head, neck, shoulders, back, all in a straight line. Eyes and mouth gently closed. Become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes. Awareness of your head, neck, shoulders, arms, chest, upper back, abdomen, lower back, hips, legs, the whole body. Shift your awareness to your breath. Normal, spontaneous breathing coupled with awareness. Shift your awareness once again to the eyebrow center, Pumadhyaya. And at the Pumadhyaya, visualize the form of either your Guru or your Ishta Devata, if you have any of them, or of a brightly burning candle flame. If it is difficult for you to visualize, you can also imagine a subtle pulsation at the eyebrow center. Whichever be the experience you choose, let your awareness gravitate towards this experience at the eyebrow center. And maintaining awareness at this point, let us chant the mantra Om three times together, followed by the Shanti mantra. Taking in a deep breath. Oh. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Vavatu Sahaviryam Karavavai Tejasvina Vadita Mastu Mavit Vishavai Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Keeping your eyes closed, gently rub the palms against each other. Place them on the closed eyes. Experience the warmth radiating from the palms to the eyes, to the brain, to the whole body. And then gently move the palms away. Open your eyes. Hari Om, Patsat, Namanarayan, Vaya. Warm welcome to week 8 of our Swadhyaya Satra series. This week, we will be looking at verses 38 to 41. And before that, let us begin the session by offering our Shraddha to Guru Dev, to the Guru Tattva, by the Sadhguru Vandana, after which we shall offer our Sraddha to Maharshi Patanjali by the Dhyana Mantras. And then we will have a revision, a quick revision of week 7, Sutras 33 to 37, after which we will discuss about Sutras 38 to 41. Let us begin.
Sri Ram Jaya Ram Jaya Jaya Ram 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 Bhava Sagar Taran Karan He Ravi Nandan Bandhan Chandan He Sharanagat Kinkar Bhitamane Guru Deva Daya Kar Dinazane Rudi Kandar Tamas Bhaskar He Tum Vishnu Prajapati Shankar He पर ब्रह्म परात पर वेद भाने गुरु देव दया कर दीन जाने मानवारण का कुश है नरत्राण करे हरि चाचुश है गुणगान परायन देवगण गुरु देव दया कर दीन कुल कुंडलिनी तो मांबंज कहे रुद्र ग्रंथ विदारण कारण के महिमातव गोचर सुधमाने गुरु देव दया कर दीना अधिमान प्रभाव अधिमार कहे अतिथि मजने तुम रक्षक हे मन संपित वंचित भक्ति जाने गुरु दे रिपु सुदन मंगल नायक हे सुख शांति वराभय दायक हे त्रयताप हरे तव नाम गुहे गुरु देव दया कर दीन जने तव नाम सदा सुख साधक हे पति पाद मामलव आवक हे मम मानस चंचल रात्रि दिल में गुरु देव दया कर दीन जने जय सत गुरु ईश्वर प्रापक हे भवरोग विकार विनाशक हे मन लीन रहे तब श्री चरण गुरु देव दया कर दीन जने श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम 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 जय जय राम 
Jaya Jaya Keeping our eyes closed for a few moments. Visualize the form of your guru at your eyebrow center. Feel the grace showering upon you. And offer pranam. Next, let us chant the Dhyana Mantras dedicated to Mahashi Patanjali, the compiler of the Yoga Sutras. Yogena chittasya padena vacham malam sharirasya cha vaidya kena yo pakarotam pravaram muninam patanjalim pranjali rana tosmi patanjala mahabhashya charaka prati sanskrutaihi mano vakkaya doshanam antre hipataye namaha Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Everyone, what is that? Gently open your eyes. Let us begin with the revision of the sutras we had looked at in the previous week. As usual, we will chant them two times, after which we will Let us begin. Maitri karuna mudito pekshanam sukha dukha punya punya vishayanam bhavana tashtitta prasadanam prachardana vidharana pyam va pranasya Vishayavati va pratvruti rutpanna manasaha stiti nagni bandhani vishoka va jyotishmati vitarag vishayam va chittam. Once again, Maitri karuna mudita upekshanam sukha dukha punya apunya vishayanam. Bhavanataha Chitta Prasadanam Kachardana Vidharana Bhyam Va Pranasya Vishayavati Va Pravruttihi Utpanna Manasaha Stiti Nibandhani Vishoka Va Jyotihi Mati Vitaraga Vishayam Va Chittam Let us look at the meanings of these cultivating the approach of friendliness, compassion, happiness, and indifference respectively, respectively towards the experiences of pleasure, pain, virtue, and vices, which will be generated due to the contact with the sense objects, helps purify the chitta. And purifying the chitta makes it peaceful and joyful. Once again, friendliness towards experiences of pleasure and people or objects giving that experience. Compassion towards experiences and objects or persons giving pain. Happiness towards experiences and objects giving virtue. And indifference towards experiences and objects bringing out the experiences of vices, apunya, that which is inappropriate, that is what purifies the chitta. This is very, very useful and important because this form we can practice 24-7. We will not be able to uh, succeed in it immediately. If we were able to succeed in it immediately, we were uh, experts. We are not experts. But if we keep this in mind, that we have to adopt these approaches, these outlooks towards these experiences, 
then slowly bit by bit our mind starts moving towards a place where there is peace and joy inside not outside whatever happens outside doesn't disturb inside here this i feel is very very essential and important सूत्र थर्टी But there are others also. There are different kriyas, different mudras, different uh, kriya yoga practices, prana vidya practices. By undertaking manipulation of the pranas, we are able to control the mind. Again, something which is very very essential and important for us to know and understand. विषयवती वा प्रवृत्ति ही उत्पन्ना मनसा स्थिति में बंधनी अ स्टेट ऑफ स्टेडीनेस इन द चित्ता कैन आल्सो बी ब्रॉट अबाउट बाय ब्रिंगिंग द माइंड टू ऑब्जर्व द एक्सपीरियंसेस ऑफ द सेंसेस एंड द आउटगोइंग टेंडेंसीज ऑफ द माइंड नाउ दिस इज अ थर्ड वे वी हैव लुक्ड एट टू वेज नाउ महर्षि पतंजलि हैज गिवन अनदर वे you bring about a steadiness of the mind by observing the mind running around it might appear to be contradictory but if you try it out you will see it to be true don't fight the mind swami ji always used to say mind is like a very powerful elephant confronting the mind will never work Befriend the mind. This is a way by which we can befriend the mind. We have the different outgoing tendencies of the mind, and the mind running around towards the senses and sense objects and everything. Okay, doesn't matter. Let me observe. I am getting angry, and I know I am getting angry. Okay, this is the situation which is making me angry. This is the situation which is making me. and this is how i am responding to that this is a situation and i am feeling sad this is a situation and i am responding this way again please don't judge but just observe see he has not said he has spoken of punya and apunya earlier and he has not said pap please remember he has said apunya he could have said pap but maharshi patanjali has used the word apunya why because he wants to let us know that there is a difference but there is no judgment in the same way in a very non judgmental manner we have to observe what is happening okay my mind although i am sitting here and listening to the swadhyay satras my mind is going oh today is sunday i have to do this oh that is there that is there that is there fair enough observe it just keep on observing like in the beginning when we chant om i am breathing in and i am aware i am breathing in in the same way my mind is playing around and i am aware my mind is playing around just that much and when that happens over a period of time of, of course you have to practice this over some time then a steadiness of the chitta can be brought about next another way there is a state of the mind where the luminous state the effulgence of the mind comes up by trying to connect with that state of the mind and just remembering that we are able to transcend that is yet another way by which we can overcome the obstacles the obstructions the difficulties which come which Maharshi Patanjali had listed earlier. 
Lastly, Gita Raga Vishayam Vachitam. Even if all these above are difficult, he has, Maharshi Patanjali has given another uh, option, the easiest option. Try and connect with the memory, with the events, the actions of a person who has transcended the passions and concentrate on that. Let the mind dwell on that. And the energy of that source which you have chosen automatically pulls you up, uplifts you. A very good way of sat sang. sang sangat means association with appropriate, good, uplifting. And sangat, when you are remembering that, is also a form of sangat. So this can also be understood as a form of satsang. Not satsang what we generally understand. Satsang is generally understood to be a discussion. But this is not necessary. You have to be in the presence, in the company. And just like an electron going into the electromagnetic field immediately changes its properties. Same way, when we come into that field of a higher individual, there is a change in our properties. That is what we have to try and do. Vita Raga Vishayam Vakshitam. So, this is what we had learned last week. And what is it that we have to learn this week? Let us look at the sutras of this week. 38 to 41. Swapna nidra jnana lambanam va yatha bhimata jnana dva paramanu param mahatvantosya vashikara shina vrutte rabhijata sieva manehe grahitru krahana grahyesu tats tadan janata samapati. Just four. But very, very important. Let's chant them once again. Swapna nidra jnana lambanam va yatha bhimata jnana dva paramanu parama mahatva antaha asya vashikaraha shena vrittehe abhijatasya iva manehe grahitru grahana grahiheshu tatstha tadan janata Samapatihi. Let's a look, have a look at the meanings of these. Sutra 38 says Swapna, state of dreams, Nidra, Nyana, Alambanam, Va. So you can provide your dreams to be the state for the support or for object of contemplation. Swamiji says that this refers to a state which is known as or going towards conscious sleeping, conscious dreaming. Generally, in the state of dreams, we are unconscious. When we are sleeping, we are unconscious. But there is also a state where we are sleeping, we are resting, our EEG, electroencephalograph, will show that the waves are exactly like when you would be in sleep or deep sleep, but you are conscious. That is a state of conscious sleeping and conscious dreaming. Swamiji had said once that you dream and you are able to remain aware about this events in the state of dream. And you can also change or think about the states. Oh, this is happening. So let us change that. So there is a bit of conscious uh, component in dream. In Usually in dreams, we are unconscious. And whatever is happening, we are just observing, experiencing that. We don't have much of a choice over there. But 
if you are able to reach that state where there is choice and consciousness and you can consciously manipulate move change that is a state of conscious sleep conscious dreaming and that is a higher state that is not a lower state that we should try and achieve and that can be utilized as a support for contemplation for meditation that is one more way which maharshi patanjali has said for us at this point of time it appears to be very difficult but as we progress slowly and slowly bit by bit this becomes possible yet again option given you see if we observe maharshi patanjali is not giving just one way he is giving actually laying out the entire cafeteria approach you would you like to choose this or that or that or that depending on your capability depending on your intention depending of your time availability all these things you can change and choose what is working for you depending on the situations depending on the circumstances you can pick any one of these and utilize them and finally he says yatha bhimat dhyana dva yatha abhimat as desired to pick up any object and meditate on that meditate on that meditate on that meditate on that so he has given a plethora of options you have to choose any of them and when we choose any of them then what happens paramanu param mahatva antaha asya vasikaraha by this one can attain mastery over the entire creation ranging from the smallest minute minutest sub atomic to the most gigantic galactic every speck of creation you can have a control on that is the strength of meditation so we can use any of them and reach that level and finally by doing so by reaching that level then what happens chhina vrutte he abhijatasy iv mane he gruhitru grahana grahyeshu tatsth tadanjanata samapatti chhina vrutte he means the vrutis get to be can and you come into a state of chhina vrutti the chitta is in a state of chhina vrutti means all the vrittis have 99.9% been eliminated there's just a very very fine trace of that remaining that is chhina vrutti once we have that then what happens abhijatasya like a very well polished manehe crystal grahit through the one who receives the cognizer of experiences grahana the medium of cognition the senses grahyesu that which is received the object of cognition the sense objects so in the experience there are three things i who am observing the experience my senses which are the medium of transmission and the object which is being taken inside as the experience now these three things and if there is some filter which is placed either because of my previous memories because of my previous samskaras because of previous associations then there is a change in perception if my senses are weakened or disturbed again there is a distorted perception and if the object 
is also not being uh, received properly. There is a distortion in perception. When the state of Shrina Vrutti happens, then what happens? There is a complete absorption of the mind into these three. And that makes it like a complete high fidelity, no discrepancy mode of experience. And when that happens, there is a complete undistorted reflection. If we have a diamond, not a raw uncut diamond, but a very well polished, cut and polished diamond, and you place it on a red cloth, it will immediately reflect red color. You pick it up and put it on a blue cloth, it will reflect a blue color. You pick it and put it on another uh, orange cloth, it will reflect orange color. It does not have any personal prejudice. It does not have any personal bias. In the same way, when we come into the state of chain of Rukti, then we have that type of a unbiased perception which is going on. And there is complete absorption of the mind. If everything goes away, only that remains when you are meditating. That is a state which is known as Samapatti. Everything has got absorbed into this. So in this week, we find that Maharshi Patanjali has told us there are multiple ways. And the end important function is to be able to experience focusing of the mind. Ekagra Chitta. And then getting the mind to transcend the vrittis. Doing so, what are we able to achieve? This is what we are able to achieve. If you remember, we started with the definition of Yogaha Chitta Vritti Nirodha. And in the first chapter, which is also known as the Samadhi Bhag, Maharshi Patanjali speaks about all these different experiences, the process, how we can reach that, and the different options which are available depending on the nature of the person, depending on the temperament of the person, depending on the situation of the person, there are different options available. But what is the end result, end objective which is needed or expected? Trying to get into a state of Shina Vritti, the Vrittis, they are all settled, shant, no longer disturbing the Chitta and they have moved away. Doing that, there is no distance between the experience and the internal perception. This allows the mind to transcend itself. And in the next he is again going to speak of the Samadhi, the state of Samadhi. What Samadhi means? How is it that we can transcend the mind? And if we can, say, go into a state of super mind, a state of cosmic mind, that which is at the moment hidden, latent, sleeping within us, within each and every one of us, no matter how old, how young, how smart, how dull, how clever, how foolish, doesn't matter. That is available to each and every one of us. And Maharshi Patanjali has given very, very simple, clear objectives how to proceed in that direction. Not sermonizing but giving practical tips. You do this. If this is difficult, try to do that. Try to do that. See, looking at the situations, 
change what is possible. And when you do that, there will be certain movement within the mind, which he has again explained. There will be difficulties. What are the difficulties? And when you come towards the difficulties, how can you transcend them? So he has placed before us the pathway. And we have now to start trying and inculcating this in our life. When is it that we can apply one aspect? When is it we can apply another aspect? What can we do? What can we not do? These are points which are very essential and crucial. We are in week eight. We will be having maybe a couple of more weeks before we finish. We have reached Sutra 41 and there are about 10 more Sutras left. So about two weeks. And I would like you to start summarizing all these Sutras. Your understanding of that in relevance with your life. And that is going to be the assignment which I will require you to submit to me before the end of our session because I would like to know what is it that you have been able to understand. Where is it that understanding needs to be polished? Only then can we actually go ahead and make a difference in our life. The idea of Swadhyaya is not just to be an intellectual master, but to be able to experience that. And therefore, I have always said that whenever Maharshi Patanjali speaks of Samadhi, let us consider that to be state of creativity of the mind, capability of the mind. Because for us, Samadhi is out of question. For us, just Harnessing the higher abilities of the mind. Let that be our first target. But to do that, we need to start practicing. And to practice, Swadhyaya can help by helping us understand this experience better, the path better. You have the map in front of you. And you know, according to the legend given, that okay, this is how we have to go. Everything is understood. But until and unless you don't start practicing, Swadhyaya itself is not going to help. Swadhyaya helps by giving you a direction. But until and unless you don't start practicing, things are not going to move ahead. But to practice, you need to understand it and you need to relate to it. And I will be able to understand how much you have understood over these last eight weeks. If you make a summary of these sutras, the way you have understood it and send it to me. So this is something which I will request all the participants to undertake and send it to me. With this, let us conclude for today. If you have any doubt or anything to ask, we can take it. Otherwise, then we can conclude. Swamiji, I have a question. Uh, yes. So, Patanjali has been talking about various ways and he's talked a lot about Ektatva Abhyasan, you know, focusing single-mindedly on either a transcended being or an object of your choice or uh, even a sound, a mantra. Or, but what he has not, two things that he has not spoken of till now, when we were discussing yesterday's asana, like a physical, uh, you know, uh, posture. And another thing he's not talked about is seva. Uh, so why is it that, uh, you know, these two uh, have not been spoken of so far? He has been, uh, you see, first point is that we have not completed the entire Patanjali uh, Sutras. So uh, he will speak about that in future, the practices. Asana. And uh, this is the Raja Yoga Sutras where uh, physical practices have slightly less importance. The mental practices have higher importance. The Asana practices you will find more in Hatha Yoga. Hatha Yoga we have to understand in a different manner. It is not the Hindi hut 
हिंदी में हट का मतलब होता है जबरदस्ती तो जबरदस्ती कुछ हम लोग कुश्ती खेल रहे हैं वो हट योग नहीं है हट योग एक पूरी दूसरी प्रक्रिया है लेकिन उसमें आसनों का उल्लेख आता है एंड देर इज ग्रेटर एम्फोसिस ऑन आसन हियर इट इज अंडरस्टूड दैट यू हैव रीच अ सर्टन स्टेट एंड देन यू आर कमिंग इन टू राजयोग सो देर फोर ही इज नॉट स्पीकिंग मच अबाउट दैट एंड इन सेवा इफ यू लुक एट द सूत्रास आफ्टर ईश्वर प्रणिधान यू विल सी देर इज अंट टूवर्ड्स सेवा and as we go ahead there will be hints about that also because these are sutras and what is the definition of sutra i had spoken about it earlier swalpaksharam asamdigdham saravat vishvato jagat astobham anavadyam cha sutram sutra vido vidhi swalpaksharam very very brief like what we can say vim zip it's a zip form it doesn't have everything asamdigdham saravat it contains everything of the world so this just hints at and once it hints at then you have to open it up and understand it so he has hinted at these methodologies but he has not gone into the details because if he had gone into the details it would have become very large and unwieldy and remember this was more than 5 to 7000 years ago at a time when information was being conveyed by oral form so if you have too many stuff we will start forgetting it out so therefore you know what uh, we do in today's times the keywords when you have a keyword then based on that keyword you can actually make up the entire essay so in the same manner what he has given us is, is a keyword so he has given us a hint about it and it is for us to develop it in our lives that's why he has not spoken about it in greater distance great details so so if that is all let us conclude please sit in any comfortable meditative posture eyes gently closed hands on your knees in dhyan or chin mudra head neck shoulders back all in a straight line bring your awareness back to the eyebrow center do madhya visualize the same image our experience you had chosen in the beginning of the practice and maintaining your awareness on this experience we shall chant the mantra om three times followed by the shanti part taking a deep breath oh oh सतो मद्गमय तमसो मोतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा मृत गमय सर्वस्ती शातिर्भवूर्ण मंगल 
ಲೋಕಸಮಸ್ತಂಬಕಮೇ ಸುಗಂಧಿ ಪುಷ್ಟಿವರ್ಧನ ಕುರ್ವಾರ್ಕಿವ ಬಂಧನ ಮೃತ್ಯೋರ್ಮುಕ್ಷೀಯಮೃತ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಪ್ರಣಾಮ ಮುದ್ರ ಮಾತಾ ಪಿತಾವೇವ ಬಂಧು ಸಖಾವೇವ ವಿದ್ಯಾವೇವ ಸರ್ವನ್ ಮಮ ದೇವ ದೇವ ಮಮ ದೇವ ದೇವ ಮಮ ದೇವ ದೇವ ಹರಿ ಜೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಸಬ್ಯ ಪಾಮ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ರೇಡಿಯೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದ ಪಾಮ್ಸ್ ಪಿಯರ್ ಐಸ್ relaxing and energizing the eyes the brain the whole body and then gently move your palms away open your eyes hari om satsat namo narayan jai so there is a small homework assignment which i have given you and i would expect that to be completed latest by end of two weeks because that is what will actually help you understand the sutras better relate to them better because when you note it down write it down there is a greater understanding which develops there is a greater integration of these which develop and that will help you slowly bit by bit putting these sutras into practice so in a week or two as you start making the summary of the sutras week by week make the summary of sutras one week 1 then week 2 week 3 week 4 and so on by doing that it will help you better and it will also tell me how much you have been able to understand so looking forward to your interpretations of the sutras your understanding of the same let's conclude here today and we will meet once again next week for the swadhyaya satra ನಮೋ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಜಯ ನಮೋ ನಾರಾಯಣ